mind this week as I said in the title. My God, there's so much that I feel like the Lord is saying, teaching me, and saying to the church. Uh, I don't even know where to start. So I'll just start. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've been doing and what you are doing. Speak to me. Speak through me. Lord Jesus, let your spirit permeate everything that I'm going to say. Let it heal, restore, deliver, and do what you want it to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. First of all, um, I was debating on what sermon to preach first. First, I was like um, managing your emotions. I got that in my head because it's been a challenge for me this week. And um, then I got um, basically what, what the Lord is doing in my head this week other than managing my emotions. <laughs> And, um, um, and what the Lord's been speaking. So, instead of trying to do a sermon titled and whatever, I'm just going to talk today about what I feel the Lord's been teaching me and let you guys know a bit about how my week was. Um, this week has been a challenging week for me. Um, emotionally and even physically sometimes just knowing how to manage what's been going on in life and in the world and whatever. So on, I think it was last week, um, um, someone told me that the cord for my cable came out from from the wall and was a tripping hazard to my attendance. So I called Rogers, which is my cable provider, and said that it was a problem. But they said, because of the pandemic, they're not sending anyone out. So that was on my heart. And I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do if, because they keep these cords or tripping people that come into my home to look, uh, to help me with my personal care needs, what am I going to do? And uh, I was thinking and I was stressing, I was like, whatever, like I was really just emotional. And, um, and in this being emotional, I, what, all these worries were coming into my head. And do you ever notice, maybe this is just me, when you're emotional, you kind of just, um, make things bigger than they really are. And any wo woman would tell you that when it's when it's you are that time of the month, your emotions get so bad, your hormones go crazy, and all that stuff. So this is what was happening to me. My hormones were going crazy, and I was like, "Oh my God, what if somebody falls?" and um, I was just, all these scenarios kept on popping into my head. And, and the Lord just calmed me. The Lord just uh, um, calms me in the middle of that. And um, he just spoke calm to me. So, in your emotional, um, times that's what he will do he will speak calm to you 
Like, even when you're emotional and going crazy and things are uh, hormonal and going nuts, that's what the Lord is famous for doing. He will speak calm in the storm. He will speak peace to you. He will speak love to you. He will speak joy to you. So that's what he did with me. Uh, speak love, peace, and joy. Um, but in that, I was still... And, and in that, I was able, after he spoke that he was with me, and all that, um, I was able to um, think rationally, and I was able to uh, email uh, the manager of the attendant services that I uh, take, because I, I live in a tenant in, in, in a 24 hour attendant care uh, building, so they they help me with my personal care needs, like getting me up um, and doing all that stuff, and and so I contacted the manager, and he said that he would help me deal with it. But it was funny because while I was panicking about all of this, um, the Lord was was speaking peace to me, but I couldn't hear his peace in my panic. It was when I calmed down and was able to just say, okay, Rachel, everything will be, everything will be all right. Um, you're trying, they know that if you tell them, they won't fall. Basically, I learned that there is really no pa power in a panic. And the first key to managing my emotions is just to calm down. Calm down and think through it. And think through it and there is always a solution. And, um, and while this physical thing was going on, um, in my head it was like, uh, nobody loves me, I have no one to help me, and blah, blah, blah. And the Lord said, no, that's not true. You have your family, you have your friends, you have everyone. All you have to do is reach out. See, when you're in a panic, um, the devil will convince you you're all alone. Nobody loves you. Nobody, what, nobody. Like he'll say all kinds of ridiculous things. And you just have to realize that it's not true. There are people around you that love you and that, and that care about you and, and would step in to help. Um, and that's, that's one thing I learned this week. And, um, and then, uh, to test me even more on the emotional front, um, today I have a hospital bed, um, because it's just easier for people to work with me and to get me out of bed. So I have a hospital bed with bed rails. And today, one of the bed rails wouldn't go, um, when, wouldn't go down. Um, the lady tried and it still wouldn't go. So instead of panicking like I did at the beginning of the week for my, for my, um, phone cord in the way, I just said, you know what, God, um, I just prayed about it, and I just left it in his hand. I said, Lord, just 
fight this for me. Give me the words. It's a weekend. I don't know if they'll come. They only work Monday to Friday. So I called. And they came right away. They just left a few minutes ago. So now my bed rail's fixed and everything's fine. So it taught me there was no power in a panic. When I was freaking out over the over the bed cords being in the way and it being a tripping hazard and Rogers not being able to come out, there was I couldn't think to do anything. But when I calmed down and really thought through the problem and really asked for help, that's when I got somewhere. That's when I got the manager to say um, to say that I'll talk to the super for you or I'll, I'll help you with that. And today, when I calm down um, with the bed, when I approached it calmly, it was it was so much easier because the first time I called the emergency service and left a message, I started to panic again, thinking that oh no, I need to call this other number. What if they don't get the message? And when I turned around to call the other number, the phone started ringing again. The phone started ringing, so he was calling me back. But because of my panic, I got stuck on the wall, and it took me a few minutes to actually get unstuck. Now, if I had have just calmed down and answered the phone, that would be great. So I called back again. And then he called me back, and we got each other, and it just was fixed. So when you think through things logically, it becomes seamless. When you panic and say, oh my god, what am I going to do? There's no power in, oh my god. There's power in thinking things through. There's power in praise. There's power in preparation not a panic. Um, so that's for somebody out there. There's power in pe- preparation, not a panic. Um, there's power in persistence, not a panic. And also, uh, for another subject entirely, another thing that's been on my mind is how everybody has a story and how things in life are not always about you. Like, when somebody comes at you kind of frostily and they just um, come at you like, like all mean and stuff, it's usually because they have something going on in their life and it's something about them or or what they're they've got going on unless you've uh, hurt them or offended them in some way then that needs to be worked through calmly and dealt with but if they just come at you for no reason that means that they have something going on with them and it's not about you and i'm gonna say something uh to preachers sometimes uh when when someone's preaching they're they're um when someone's listening to someone preach they are not really there, like they're sitting there, but they're not really there. They're thinking about their loved ones, they're thinking about what to cook in the freezer, whatever is going on in their lives. And the Lord reveals to me, is like, look beyond what you see. He's like, when you're 
preaching and you see someone just ready to kill you or like they look like they're ready to kill you arms crossed or whatever it's probably because they need what you're saying the most and they've got something going on in their lives he, he's like he's like he said to me don't take it personally when people don't respond like you think they're going to respond because he said, I didn't call you to preach a sermon for them. I called you to preach a sermon for, for, for you. Because at that time, sometimes you need the sermon more than they do. And down the road, they'll... They might respond to it or they might not, but you're preaching because I've called you to it. And you're serving me, but they're benefiting. He's like, he said to me, don't worry about the numbers so much. Don't worry if 10, only 10 people watch a sermon or eight people or whatever worry not worry think that i've given you my word and you're preaching it don't worry so much about who's watching or not not watching just just think that you're preaching my word and when people need it they'll grab it this sermon might be for someone down the road. Um, this sermon might be for someone down the road, or this sermon might be for someone watching it tomorrow. And this person, this person might not know about you yet, but in five years, they'll need it. So, it it is not for you to know why or who or it is not for you to get discouraged because these sermons are not for them at the time. They're for you because quite often with me, I don't know about any other pastors, quite often I'm preaching stuff that I need to hear <laughs> and he said quite often they're not for them, they're for you. And but people benefit from what I'm teaching you. So he said, do sermons out of what I'm teaching you, not so much I need to find a sermon for the people. Because people need all kinds of different things. But if you if you teach them out of what I'm teaching you, it will come from a genuine place and they will get what they need from what I'm teaching you. So that's one thing. And she's, he said, um, he said one thing too. He said, sermons, the best sermons are not the ones preached, they're the ones lived. So basically, don't, even if you don't preach a sermon, live one out, live God's story out. What I mean by God's story, live like Jesus, love like Jesus, and that's, that's all you have to do. If you live in love like Jesus, people will want, people will want what you have because it will be magnetic because Jesus will draw the love of Jesus will draw people onto himself. And the next thing 
that God's been teaching me is about uh, the new wave of creativity. He said, he said to me last night, he said, I want a new wave of creativity. Uh, he's like, he's like, gone are the days of sitting in rooms and writing songs. He said, he said, these songs for this season need to come from a genuine, like, a genuine place. And he brought me back to the um, song Generations Before. If you listen to the music of an era, you would know what was going on at that time. So, if you, uh, if you listen to these two things, the muse, the music and the fashion of an era, you would know exactly what's going on in that era. So he's like, if you listen to songs from the 40s, uh, you would see, like, this big, big band uh, swing thing going on because people back then, uh, they were at war, so they needed um, music that would pick them up. If you listen to music of the 50s, that's when doo-wop came in. That's when all that stuff came up in. That, that when jiving dances came in and the music of the 50s was like doo-wop and stuff like that. Um, if you listen to music of the 60s, they... It was all about war and coming together and love and peace and whatever. Because uh, music and fashion reflected the culture of the time, the culture of the day. Like, and um, that, and if you listen to the music of the 70s, um, it was all about the disco era, the fun era. We we had come out of the uh, war and stuff like that, and we were into the fun era again with the disco era. And if you listen to the music of the 80s, it was more fun. And it was more electrical guitars. It was so much disco, it was electric, um, not electric guitars, it was synthesizers and all of that, um, like, it was so interesting, so the music of the era identified what was actually going on in the culture, and he's like, songwriters, worship leaders, I, I need, he's like, he said something that surprised me, <laughs> he said, I don't need another worship song, he's like, I need you to identify what's going on in the culture now and write about it, he said, creative people like book authors and songwriters, He's like, I need you to step up and and write about it, and I need I need you to not be afraid to say what I'm saying to you. Uh, and it was phenomenal, you know. There is somebody that the Lord is speaking to right now. You're afraid. You have songs and books and all that stuff inside of you and you're afraid that they're too uh, wild or they're not Christian enough or they're not whatever enough but these things just keep popping into you but um, he's saying they're not he's saying they're what I've given you 
He's like, it's, it's extraordinary what I've given you. Use it. He's like, write down what you want to write down. Sing what you want to sing. He's like, it's not going to look like it's been looking before. Too long we've let the culture speak to the church. And it's time that we flip that around and let the church speak to culture in a way that they can understand. And not in just uh, preaching, but in our music and in the way we worship. There are going to be new avenues of uh, worship and new kind of ministries coming out of this time period. It's not just going to go back to the way it is. And a lot of preachers have said that, but I'm going to reiterate it. This is going to flip the world upside down. It already has. Um, but the so Lord says to listen and learn from your listening. He says to listen and learn from your listening. So, so I told you God's been saying a lot to me, and he's been, he's been really, uh, talking to me a lot about certain things. Actually, I think he's just trying to make me the kind of woman that he wants me to be, because he knows what's coming for me, and he knows... Uh, what he is got planned for me and he knows the tools I need to let it happen and he's saying to us writers and songwriters and uh, book writers he's saying do not be afraid what I've get what I've given you in this season speak it out. Don't be afraid that it's not Christian enough. Speak it. Speak it out. Because the world needs to hear what I've given you. And he's like, creativity will come when you're doing life. I'll say that again. Creativity will come in any form when you're doing life. So this season, he's clearly saying to me, creativity won't be planned. It will come when you're doing life. It'll come when you're playing with your children. It will come when you're just outside doing life. It won't, it won't come in like planned songwriting sessions. It will just come when you're doing life. Creative ideas will come when you're doing life. You don't have to wait or even pray for them. He's saying, if you're available to me, it will just drop in your spirit. You, you, you'll get creative ideas for businesses. You'll get creative ideas for whatever uh, he's called you to do and whatever talents you have. He said to some parents, your children are getting creative ideas and not to brush them off, to write them down, to ask your 12-year-old about that to probe more deeply about what they're seeing because I see children are, are seeing some wonderful things and what they need when they're a child is to be nurtured and sometimes uh, adults have the tendency to brush children off when they're when they're having a creative idea so whatever, but whatever creative idea they're having, even if it sounds stupid, tell them to write it down. Whatever dreams they're having, tell them to write it down. 
even when it if it sounds stupid because the Lord will take little grains from those dreams and just blossom it into creative ideas. I see children um, getting creative business ideas and uh, writing songs and doing whatever. Do never underestimate your children. Never underestimate your children. Never underestimate your children because they are the future and they are, they have creative ideas too and nurture them and encourage them no matter how stupid they're, no, not stupid, no matter how far-fetched their ideas sound. Tell them to write it down because the Lord uh, may use a, even a little seed from that idea to turn it into something in them. To turn it into something in them that will shape and change the world. Because this pandemic is showing us all things, but our children are suffering too because they're not able to play with their friends or do certain things. But in that, the Lord will speak to them as well. So teach them about God's voice. Teach them about prayer. Teach them how to go to God with their creative ideas, with their dreams, with their sorrow, because, with their joys, because, for two reasons. When you're not there, parents still know who God is. And then the second reason is um, they will, God will develop creative ideas in them that you wouldn't even have dreamt of. So nurture their ideas, even if their ideas sound far fetched or stupid, just tell them to write them down and. and because the Bible says to, to write the vision and make it plain. So just tell them to write them down and save them. Because I, I see children coming out with even books and, and things like that. Creative things for businesses. Um, creative ideas for businesses. Because remember children are adults who are not yet formed. Let me say that again. Children are adults who are not yet formed. So teach them. Teach them in their own language. Teach them in a way to, uh, that they all understand. So guys, thank you so much for listening to my ramblings. Bye guys. Remember, there's no power in a freak out. There's power in preparation and persistence. And remember, God's go going to um, God's going to give you creative ideas in a different way while you're just doing life. And remember that people are watching your silent sermons, how you live your life and how you, how you act towards people. And basic, and as well too, um, sometimes people may not know what they need but sometimes the Lord will show you what they need and the the key is to just be open to it and not to take 
everything so personally. Ask God to give you new eyes in this season um, when it comes to people and how they're acting towards you because it's it's not about it's not about you. It's about how they feel about themselves and what situation they're going through. And sometimes they they need something that they don't even know that they need and you can provide and in this season God's going to drop people in your spirit to just bless with a text or a Facebook post or um, something else. So just be open to that. And be open to the fact that it may not be someone you even like. It may be someone that doesn't like you or you don't get along with. That he's going to say, bless that person with this. Or drop this by that person's door. It's going to be uncommon acts of kindness in this season. And those acts of kindness will bloom into friendships that you would not have known before. I see friendships, I see relationships, I see everything just coming out of your obedience and your and your silent sermons to people and your and your unique ways of reaching out and for you preachers your unique ways of preaching. The Lord will show you some unique ways of preaching to this generation that He's He's not used with anyone before. Whether you have a small church or whether you're um, just preaching on Facebook like me, whether you are um, a single mother of two, whether you're a pastor for 50 years, he's going to show you uncommon ways to reach the people in your congregation. Don't fight him on that because he knows what what your congregation needs. And although the best sermons are for you, are, are preached out of your experience, I shouldn't say they're for you, but they're preached out of your experience. He's going to show you unique ways to reach this generation. Hold tight, preacher. Don't give up. He's going to give you unique ways and unique ways to do ministry in this season. So, I know I bounced a bit around a bit today, and I'm sorry about that. But the Lord's the Lord was speaking so much to me today, and I didn't know which one to pick, so I just put it all in one big thing so i hope you get something out of this and um i hope and god bless you thank you so much for listening and i appreciate your support share this if you want to and and have a wonderful day And what I've learned this week, too, is testing is part of the process. Testing is part of the process. So if you're being tested, know that it's part of your process. Don't fight the test. Embrace it because it's full. he'll use it later. 
He said, all things are working together for your good, including the test. So, although the test may be hard, he's working it together for your good. Thanks, guys, so much. Bye. You can do all things. You can do all things, brother Phil. Cause you never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. And then I know, I know that you never will. You can do things you can do all things but fail cause you never lost a battle never lost a battle and I know I know you 